She's the first person to reach 100 million followers on TikTok. At 17 years old, Charlie D'Amelio found herself becoming the fastest rising star on social media. It was a dream come true that quickly became a nightmare. People don't like who I am. With the millions of people now watching her videos, Charlie became super self-conscious about the way that she looked, slowly becoming a perfectionist. I have to be this person that is happy and upbeat. Are we walking weird? Do I sound stupid? What am I saying? What does my hair look like? Is my makeup messed up? Does my outfit look good? When you add millions of people watching your every move, millions of people ready to tear you apart at every second, that's like constant terror. Charlie became obsessed with her critics, slowly becoming an approval addict. To deal with the fact that like, people don't like who I am. Always wonder what's going to happen next or what, if I'm gonna wake up and everyone's gonna not like me again. I'm never done thinking about it, which is tough. Watching Charlie emotionally struggle begs the question, is this fame really worth it? Well, I don't know, it's just like, I don't even know if I want to do this anymore. Like, this is messed up stuff that people are saying. If this is the community that I'm in and the community that I put myself in, I don't know if I want to do that anymore. Like, don't tell people to kill themselves. Like most parents, Charlie's mom and dad are torn. On one hand, they want her to be protected. On the other hand, they want her to keep living an adventure. Everybody has their insecurities. It's hard to work through that, but she uses dance to get through her emotions. So to see people on these apps say she's not a real dancer, you're a good dancer, that's it. I look at it as just an adventure, so, and we can always go back. At my age, I'm excited about like this whole thing and fame aside, business aside, it's just cool. I'll tell you what would be cool. If Charlie was emotionally resilient, mentally tough enough to handle the platform she's on, but right now she's not. She's developing a anxiety disorder. She's experiencing daily panic attacks, and she's emotionally crumbling under the pressure of fame and fortune. I feel like it just gets more difficult than like every <laughs> Like 10 to 15 huge panic attacks a day. I think when Charlie has anxiety around me, I try to be very careful because she's very sensitive and fragile. I like want to push her, but I also don't want to over push her. If I was working with Charlie or anyone like her, I would do a combination of exposure response prevention therapy, ERP, and cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT. This unique combination challenges her to face her fears in incremental stages, while also rethinking the criticism that she has to face every day. I call this therapeutic challenge, heart your haters. You should give it a try. Next time someone criticizes you in the comment section, ask yourself, did their comments help you? Perhaps their comments pointed out an area you needed to improve. If so, give them a heart. Did their comments entertain you? Perhaps they said a joke that was at your expense and an emotionally healthy person must learn to take and make a joke about themselves. So start practicing now and give them a heart. Did their comments advise you? Perhaps they gave you some good but harsh advice. You can take or leave the advice, but make sure you give them a heart. Did their comments rebuke you? You know, a wise person learns to receive a rebuke well. You know, it, it, it brings humility, but humility will always look good on you. So give them a heart. Did their comments toughen you? You know, at the very least, the negative comments evoke out of you an insecurity. That is a point of weakness. And like a good boxer needs a good sparring partner to get in the ring and show them where they are weak and where they need to be strengthened. So we need haters in our life to show us where we're weak and give us an opportunity to strengthen ourselves. So give those haters a heart. Every time you heart your haters, you're training your brain to find gold in the garbage. There is tremendous value to criticism. You just have to learn to find it. And when you get really good at this skill, you will become unstoppable.
But for some reason, if you simply cannot endure the harsh criticism, get off social media. You are not emotionally strong enough to handle it. Aristotle said there's only one way to avoid criticism, do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. I'm social psychologist Brooks Gibbs. Thanks for watching.